Welcome to this beginner tutorial on basic character modeling for beginners. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to model this basic character in Blender. If you'd like to help support me and this channel, then you can purchase the tutorial files on my Gumroad store, and you can also get the tutorial files on my Patreon page. And checking out my Gumroad store and Patreon page are great ways to help support me and this channel. I'll have the links in the description. And after you watch this tutorial, if you'd like to learn how to rig this character, I will also be creating a tutorial on how to rig this character, so I'll have the link in the description to that rigging tutorial when it's released. And one more thing before we get started, I wanted to thank this video's sponsor, Sketchfab. On Sketchfab's 3D model store, you can purchase models and assets. My favorite feature of Sketchfab is that you can upload and preview your own 3D models in your browser. You can even view your 3D models on a phone or tablet. You can also apply to become a seller on the platform. Check out Sketchfab with the link in the description. All right, so I've just opened up a new scene in Blender. Now, as we're modeling this, if you want to see the screencast keys, they're going to be right down here in the corner so you can see what buttons I'm pressing. Now, I'm not going to need the timeline, so just to have a little bit more room in the 3D space, I'm going to hover my mouse right over here when the crosshair appears, and then I'm going to click and then drag up and then drag down and then let go and that'll close the timeline. And I can also just make this a little bit smaller. Now to help us with the modeling, I've provided some free modeling reference images so you can download those with the links in the description. So I have a free download of those on my Patreon and also on my Gumroad store. So I first want to double tap the A key to select everything and then I'm going to press X and we are going to click on delete. So I now just want to add in those reference images. So I'm going to press one on the numpad and that is going to take me to the front view. So I now want to add the reference images. So I'm going to press Shift A. Shift A is the shortcut key to add things. And I want to go right down here to image and I want to add a background. So again, links in the description if you'd like to download the free modeling reference images. So once you download the reference images, you can just extract the zip file and go into the folder. And then I'm going to select the front image first. And you can see right here, there is that align to view button. If I press N, that is going to open up this side panel here in Blender's file browser. And I do want to make sure this is turned on. And I'm going to click on load background image. And because we have the align to view turned on, it's going to be on the front view because we were looking at the front view. So I now want to add in the side view. So I'm going to press three on the numpad. That's going to take me to side view and I'm going to press shift a and I'm going to go right here to image. And then again, I want to open another background. And then this time I want to locate to the side view one. So I'm just going to click on the side view and then click on load background image. And again, we want the align to view to be turned on. So I'm just going to click on that. And now we have one at side view. And then if I press one on the numpad, we also have one at front view. So I'm now going to press seven on the numpad and that is going to take me to top view. And I'm going to do the same thing. So I'm going to press shift a, I'm going to go here to image and I want to load in a background. And then this time I want to add in the top image so I can just double click on this to add it in. Now, if I click and drag with my middle mouse wheel, you can't actually see the reference images in the perspective view. But if I press five on the numpad, that is going to take me into the orthographic perspective. And so in the orthographic perspective, you are able to see the reference images. Now, when I press one on the numpad or three or seven on the numpad to go to front view, side view and top view, we are in the orthographic perspective. You can see right there, it says top orthographic. But if I'm just clicking around with my middle mouse wheel, we are in the user perspective. So that way we're just able to see the reference images when we're looking from the orthographic perspective, but not in the 3D space. And so that's actually very helpful because when we're on side view, we'll be able to look at those reference images, but then we won't be able to see the reference images when we're just looking around at the 3D character in the 3D space. So I'm gonna press one in the numpad for the front view. And before we start with the modeling, there's just one more thing I want to do. I want to save this Blender file just in case so that if it crashes, we won't lose any of our progress. So let's click on file and then I'm going to click on save as. And I'm just going to save this as character modeling.blend in a folder on my computer and I'll just click on save as. And then as you're working on the project, you can press control S and that is the shortcut key to save the Blender file. All right, so to start off, I want to model the head. So to model the head, I'm going to press shift A and I want to go over here to mesh and I want to add a UV sphere. Now, right when you add the UV sphere without clicking away from it or moving it at all, uh, I want to click right over here on the add UV sphere.
your settings. And that is going to bring up these settings. So just click on that. I'll just move myself out of the way. So you can see we have segments and then we also have rings. And so we can use this to change the topology of the UV sphere. So on the segments, I'm going to turn that to a value of 16. So I'm going to just change the segments to 16. And then on the rings, I want to change that to 12. So the rings to 12. And now you can see that, that sphere is lower topology. So I can now just click on this little button right here, and that's going to hide the add UV sphere settings, and I'll just move myself back. So now that I've added that UV sphere, I want to rotate it over. So what I'm going to do is press tab, and tab is going to go into the edit mode so we can edit the object. So I'm now going to press R, and R is going to rotate the sphere. Now I want to rotate it exactly over by 90 degrees. So what you could do is you could hold down the control key, and that is going to make your movements be moved by increments. So you can move that over exactly to 90 degrees, but I could also just type in 90 and then enter, and that'll rotate it over by exactly 90 degrees. Now this character is symmetrical, so one side is the same as the other side. So what I can actually do is just delete half of the character, and then we can just model one side, and we can use Blender's mirror modifier to mirror it over to the other side, so we only have to model one side. So that is what I'm going to do, and it's going to make each side exactly the same, and it'll also speed up the modeling process. So to do that, I first need to delete half of it, and then we will add the mirror modifier. So to delete half of it, I need to go into the wireframe view so I can select the front and back. So I'm going to hold down the Z button, and then I'm going to move my mouse over to the wireframe, and then I'm going to let go. And so that way you're able to see through the mesh. So I'm now going to press A, and A will deselect everything. And then I just want to select this side. So I'm going to press B, and B is going to use the box select. And I'm going to click and drag and just drag a box around this side. And then I'm going to press X to delete. And I want to delete the vertices. So now half of it is selected, but we still have this side right here. So I now want to add a mirror modifier. So it mirrors it over to the other side. So I'm going to go right over here to the modifier properties. Let's make this a little bit bigger. And on the modifier properties, I can click on add modifier. And under generate, I'm going to go right down here, kind of halfway in between the top and the bottom. We're going to add the mirror modifier. And then you can choose what axis you want it to be mirrored on. So if I click and hold my mouse wheel, you can see there are different axes. So this one back and forth, this one is the Y axis, and that, that is green. And then this one back and forth here, that is the X axis. And so I do want to mirror it over by the X axis, so it's going to mirror it over by that red line. All right, so just make sure you press one again to go to the front view. And then I want to press tab to go back into object mode. So I now want to scale this down and just kind of fit it to the head. So I'll press S to scale, and we're going to scale the entire object down. And then I will click to place that. And then I can press G and G is the shortcut key to grab objects. And then I'm going to press Z and Z is going to bring it up on the Z axis. So we're going to bring that up on the Z axis and then just click to place that there. So it's kind of at the top of the head. So I now want to go back into edit mode. So I'm going to press tab and that will take me back into edit mode. And then I just want to select the side of the sphere and I want to kind of squish it down so it's a bit more flat. So I'm going to press B again. B is going to use the box select and I'm just going to drag a box around those vertices and then let go. And so we just have those vertices selected. So now I want to flatten them. So I'll press S and that will scale the vertices. And then I want to scale them on the X axis. So you can hit X to scale it on the X axis. And I'm just going to make these pretty flat and then just click to place that. Now I want to bring this back a little bit. You can see it's coming out too far. So I'm going to press G and G will grab the selection. And then I want to bring it back this way. So I'm going to hit X and that will bring it back on the X axis. And I'm going to bring it kind of back like that. All right. So let's also press control S and that will save our project. And then if I press A to select everything, and then if I press G to grab, you can see that the mirror modifier is not connecting those together. It's not connecting both sides together. And so what I want to do is I want to turn on this clipping button right here. So if I click on the clipping button, now if I press G to grab, you can see that the clipping is going to make sure that the mirror modifier merges the center vertices together. And then I went into solid view. So I'll just go back into the wireframe view by holding down the Z button, going into wireframe and letting go. All right, so I can now press three on the numpad and that's going to take me back to the side view. And I actually want to tab to go back into object mode. And then I want to scale the whole thing up in object mode. So I'll press S to scale. And then you can see it's a little bit too high. So I'll press G to grab and I'll bring it down on the Z axis. So hit Z and just bring that down a little bit. All right, so I can now press tab to go into edit mode. And I now want to kind of shape the jaw. So I'm going to press A to deselect everything. And then I just want to select those vertices so I can pull out the jaw. So I'll press B for the box select. 
I'm going to click and drag and just drag a box around those vertices. And then I can press G to grab, kind of bring that out. I'll press R to rotate, kind of rotate that up a little bit, kind of bring that over. And I want to rotate this up so that those vertices are kind of right about there. And then I want to deselect all the vertices. So I'll press A to deselect those vertices. I'll press B for the box select. And I'm just going to box select these top vertices. And I can press R to rotate kind of rotate that back and I'll press G to grab and just kind of bring that down like that. And you can see this kind of goes back down, kind of goes back into the face a little bit. So I'll press A to deselect everything and then I'll press B for the box select. And I'm just going to click and drag and drag a box around those vertices and then I can press G to grab and I want to bring them a little bit more forward just like that. All right, that's looking pretty good. If I press one on the numpad for front view, you can see that the entire thing is kind of moved out a little bit and also that jaw is too big. It's coming out too much. So I'm going to double tap the A key to select everything and then I can press S to scale and I want to scale this on the X axis and just kind of scale the whole thing down a little bit and then I want to push it in. So I'm going to press G to grab and I'll bring this in on the X axis and just kind of push that in a little bit just like that. So now if I hold down the Z button, go back to the solid view, I can see how that's looking. Now you can see this jaw is coming way too far out. So what I'm going to do is select this vertex, hold down the shift key, select this vertex and then I want to press one on the numpad for front view. And then I want some of the other vertices around these vertices to be pulled along with it as I move it. So I'm going to turn on the proportional editing. So to turn on the proportional editing, you can press the O key or you can click right here and that is going to turn on the proportional editing. So if I now press G to grab, you can see there's a little circle. And if you don't see the circle, that's probably because you need to scroll with your mouse wheel to make it bigger or smaller. So I can now press X and that is going to bring this over on the X axis. And I want to just kind of scroll my proportional editing and just make it a bit smaller something like that so that some of these vertices are being pulled along with those other vertices that are selected. So I'm just going to make everything a little bit smaller, kind of bring that in a little bit, and then I'll press three on the numpad for side view. That's looking pretty good. And then what I also want to do is just kind of bring these vertices up to kind of shape that jaw just a little bit more, but I don't want to use the proportional editing anymore. So I'm going to press O or you can also click on this button right here to turn it off. So I'm going to press G to grab and we're going to bring that back a little bit. Let's press one on the numpad to go to front view and I can press G to grab and just kind of move that up a little bit. You can also just go into the perspective view and just kind of move that over a little bit. So I want a little bit more of a sharper jaw. So I'll press three on the numpad for side view, just kind of bring that over. And then I can also press R to rotate and just kind of rotate that a little bit. And then I also want to bring this down a little bit. So I'm just going to select this vertex, hold down the shift key, select this vertex, and I can press G to grab and R to rotate just kind of bring that down a bit. All right, that is better. Let's press Control S again to save the project. So now I want to extrude out the neck. But before I do that, I need to shape the neck. And to shape the neck, I'm going to be using a Blender add on. Now the add on is built into Blender. So you don't need to download or install anything, you just need to enable the add on. So to enable the add on, let's click right up here on edit, and we're going to go to the preferences. And then in Blender's preferences, you can click over on the add ons, and then go right here to the search, and I'm going to start to type in loop. So L O O P. And you can see right here, there's this mesh loop tools. So I'm just going to click on the check mark there to make sure it is turned on. Now, if you want this blender add on to be turned on in all of your other blender projects, then you can click on that save preferences button. And that way, when you open up other blender projects, it's going to be automatically turned on. And I have it turned on on default because I do like to use it a lot. So now that we have that turned on, we can close the user preferences. So to use the add on, I'm going to press the N key and the N key is going to bring up this side panel here. And I want to click over here on edit. And when you click on edit, you can now see there's this loop tools right here. And this is the add on. So what we can do now is we can select all the pieces that we want to be the neck. And then we can tell this loop tools add on to turn it into a circle. So what I'm going to do is click right here and that's going to go to the face select, you can also press the three on the top of your keyboard. So I'm now going to select this face and then hold down the shift key and select these other faces. So we just have these four bottom faces selected. And that's what I want to be the neck. So I can now click on this circle right here. And that is going to turn it into a circle. And you can see it's also worked with the mirror modifier. So it's made this a complete circle. And that's exactly what I want. So I now just need to place this into the correct spot. And then we can extrude it out. So I'll press the N key and that is going to close the side panel. And then I can press three on the numpad for the front 
view. Now you can see that it's kind of at a weird shape, so I need to press R to rotate, and I'm gonna rotate this up, and just kind of rotate it so the top is pretty flat, and then I can press S to scale, and I wanna scale this on the Z axis, so hit Z, and then I can type in zero and enter, and that is going to flatten that all down. So I'll press three on the numpad for the side view. So I can now press R to rotate, and G to grab, and then S to scale, and we're going to scale that up and just kind of stick it up here kind of where the neck is. And then also you can press one on the numpad to go to the front view and hold down the Z button and go into the wireframe and just make sure that is correct back and forth. That looks pretty good, although I think I'll just bring it in a little bit. So I will press G to grab and then I will hit the X key to bring it in on the X axis just a little. Okay, I'll press three on the numpad for the side view and I can now extrude the neck out. So to extrude the neck out, I can press E and E is going to extrude that out. And then I I can press R to rotate, click to place that, and G to grab. We're just going to stick that at the bottom of the neck. Let's press Control S to save. So I now want to extrude this out again to make the shoulders. So I'm going to press E to extrude. We're going to bring that down, and then I can press S to scale, and we're going to scale that up, and then I can press R to rotate. We'll rotate that a little bit, and G to grab, and we're just going to bring that over a little bit. And then I'll press 1 on the numpad, and that's going to take me to the front view, and I'll press G to grab, and I want to bring this way up and kind of bring it over like that. I can also press R to rotate and just kind of rotate that over. Now you can see at the bottom of the neck, is way too far down and so I want to just select those loops and then just kind of bring that up. So what I'm going to do is click and hold my mouse wheel just to preview that better. I'm going to hold down the Z key and then I'm going to go over to solid view and let go just so that we can see that a lot better. And then what I'm going to do to select that loop of vertices is I'm going to hold down the alt key and then just select the loop of vertices. So just hold down the alt key and then use whichever mouse button you use to select. So I use the right click select but most people use the left click select so you can just hold down the alt key and then left click right there to select that loop of vertices so i'm now going to press one to go back to the front view and i can press g to grab and then i'll also press s to scale that out a little bit and just make that a little bit bigger now we are going to be adding a subdivision surface modifier which will smooth out the mesh so i don't need to bring it all the way up i can just bring it up a little bit more and we can adjust this later if we need to all right so now what i want to do is shape the shoulders a little bit better so i'm going to first select this vertex text and then I'm going to double tap the G key. So double tapping the G key is going to activate the edge slide and so we can slide the vertices along those edges. So I'm just going to bring that down and then I can select this one. I'll double tap the G key and kind of bring that down. Let's do that on the back here. So over on the back here you can see that's kind of stretched and it's really big and it's not very even. So I'm going to select this vertex and I will double tap the G key just kind of bring that down click to place that and then I can select this vertex and I'll double tap the G key and then just place that there. All right, so that is looking much better. Now, if I press three on the numpad for the front view and then hold down the Z button, go to wireframe, you can see that neck is just a little bit too long. So I'm gonna hold down the Alt key and just Alt select that ring of vertices. And then I wanna press S to scale and I'm just going to scale it on the Y axis. So hit Y and I'm just gonna make that a bit smaller like that. But that is still looking good on the front view. All right, so I'll now press A to deselect everything, and I'm going to press B for the box select, and I'm just going to box select those vertices, and I'll press B again for the box select, and I just box select those vertices. So I can now just press S to scale. Let's also scale those in a little bit on the Y axis, and then I want to extrude these down to kind of make the rest of the body. So I'm going to press E to extrude. We're going to extrude that down, and I can press R to rotate and then S to scale, just place that there, and then press G to grab and just kind of fix that. Then I can also press one on the numpad to go to front view, and I can press R to rotate and G to grab, and I'm gonna bring that right down there. So I want this part to be right here at the bottom of the arm. And then I wanna press A to deselect everything, and I'll press B for the box select, and I'm just gonna box select the shoulder, and I'll press G to grab, and I wanna bring that up a bit. Now if I click and hold with my mouse wheel, you can see that these two faces are very sharp, and I want to make those flat. So what I'm gonna do is click right here to the face select, and then I'm gonna select this face, and then I'll hold down the shift key and select this face. So I can now press S to scale, because I wanna scale them. I'm gonna hit X to scale them on the X axis, and I wanna make them perfectly flat. So I'm gonna type in zero, and then enter. And now you can see that those are flat on that axis. So if I press one and then numpad for front view, I can now press G to grab, 
and I can bring it over on the x-axis and just kind of bring that over like that. All right, that's really good. Now I want this to be a circle so that it is a better shape for the arm. But before I do that, I do want to add a little bit of more topology. So what I'm going to do is add a loop cut right here. So to add a loop cut, I'm going to press Control R and you can see there's that little yellow line and I'm going to left click and then right click. And that way the loop cut stays in the center. So now what I can do is I can go right here to the face select and I'm just gonna hold down the shift key and select all of these faces. So this is gonna be where the arm comes out and so I wanna make that circular. So what I'm gonna do is press N again and N is gonna open up the side panel and you can go right over here to edit and then just like before, like we did with the neck, I want to click on circle and now that is a circle. So if I press three on the numpad for side view, I can press R to rotate and I just wanna rotate that back and forth so it's a little bit more straight up and down just kind of rotate that over like that and then I can press N to close that side panel and then if I press one on the numpad for front view I want to press G to grab and I want to bring that over a little bit and then I also want to rotate it so I'll press R to rotate and S to scale scale that up a little bit and just kind of bring it right over here so this top part is where the shoulder is and then right down here that is the bottom of the arm so I can now press E and E is going to extrude out those vertices or extrude out those faces. And I can now press S to scale and R to rotate and G to grab. And I just want to stick those right there. So this is going to be the starting of the arm. And then this is going to be like the shoulder. All right, that is looking really good. Just take a look at that. That's good. Let's press Control S again to save. So before I do the arm, I do want to extrude down the torso. So I'm now going to select this face and then hold down the shift key. And we're going to select those other faces. And I can press three on the numpad. And that's going to take me to the side view. And I can also press G to grab and just kind of move that over and S to scale and scale that up a little bit so it fits the reference a little bit better. So I can now press E to extrude and I want to extrude this down and I'll just click to place that. And then I actually want to see this in the wireframe. So I'll hold down the Z button, go over to wireframe and let go so that we can preview that in the wireframe. And then I want to scale the whole thing down. And I also want to scale it flat because you can see it kind of comes up a little bit right there. So I'm going to rotate this over so it's pretty flat. And then I will press S to scale and I want to scale this on the Z axis. And then I want to type in zero and enter. So now you can see that it is perfectly flat. So I'll press three again on the numpad to go to side view and just kind of press G to grab and just position that. Now, if I press one on the numpad for front view, you can see that it's actually pretty good, but I want to press G to grab and just kind of push it in just a little, but something like that is pretty good. So I'll press three on the numpad again to go to the side view. Now you can see right back here, we need to shape the back a little bit and kind of the chest. So I'm going to press one on the top of my keyboard or click right here to go to the vertex select. I'm now going to press A to deselect everything. And then I want to press B for the box select and I'm just going to drag a box around those vertices right there and I can press G to grab and I just want to push them up a little bit so that way it's a bit more round. So I'll press A to deselect everything. I'll press B for the box select. Just box select those vertices right there and then I can press G to grab and we're going to bring them up so they're a bit more straight to that loop cut and just bring it out a little bit. All right, let's hold in the Z button and go back into solid view and just kind of take a look at that. You can also tab into object mode and just see how that's looking. That's looking very cool. So let's keep extruding this down. So I'm gonna press three on the numpad to go to the side view and I'm gonna press tab to go into edit mode. I'm gonna hold down the Z button, go over to wireframe and let go. And then I need to deselect everything. So I'll press A to deselect everything. And then I'll press B for the box select. And I'm just gonna drag a box around those vertices just like that. So I can now press E to extrude we are going to extrude that down and then I can press R to rotate we're just going to rotate that over kind of like that and then I'll press E to extrude again and then bring that down and I'll press S to scale and we're just going to scale that up a little bit and just kind of rotate it into place I can also press one on the numpad and you can see I just want to make the hips slightly wider so I'll press G to grab and just kind of bring those out a little bit all right I'll press three again to go back to the side view so just kind of rotate that into place just like that then I'll press E to extrude again, and we're going to extrude this down, and it's going to start to connect to the legs now. So I'll press R to rotate, and then S to scale, and G to grab, and we'll stick that down there. Let's press 1 on the numpad for front view, and I actually want to rotate this sideways, and then scale it up a little bit, but I just want to scale it up on the x-axis. So scale it up on the x-axis, and then press G to grab, and just kind of bring that down. So I'm now going to click with my mouse wheel and rotate the view down, and I want to select this vertex right here. And I'm going to double tap the G key and I'm going to bring 
that over, just kind of edge slide that over. And then I want to delete these two big faces right here because that's where the legs are gonna come out of. So I'm gonna click right here to go to the face select and I'm gonna select this face, I'll press X and we want to delete the faces. Select this face and I'll press X and I want to delete the faces. Now I wanna add some more topology in here. So I'm gonna press Control R to add a loop cut and I will left click and then right click. And then I'm gonna press Control R and I will left click and then right click. And that way we'll have some more topology so this can be a bit more more round and we'll also have some more topology uh, when we're creating the legs so it is more round. So I'm now just going to go right here to the vertex select and I'm just going to select this vertex, hold down the shift key, select this vertex. And then again, I want to use that proportional editing that we used earlier. So I'm going to press the O key, and that is going to turn on the proportional editing. And I'm going to press G to grab, and I'm going to bring this down on the Z axis. And that way, these other vertices are being pulled along with it. And I can just kind of scroll my mouse wheel out. Let's also press three on the numpad for side view, and I can see how that's looking. So I want to hold down the Z button, go back to wireframe and let go. And then I can press A to deselect everything. And then I'll press B for the box select. I'm just going to box select those vertices and I can press G to grab and just kind of move them up a bit. Scroll with my mouse wheel, make that a bit smaller. Press A to deselect everything. I'll press B for the box select. Just box select those vertices and then I can press G to grab and kind of bring them up a bit. And then I'll press A again to deselect everything. I'll press B for the box select and I'm going to select all of these and I want to press G to grab and just kind of bring them up a little bit. And then I can also just press O to turn off the proportional editing. I don't really need that anymore. And I'll just scale this up just a little. Let's also press one on the numpad for front view, see how that is looking. So I'll press A to deselect everything and then I'll press B for the box select, just box select those vertices and I can press G to grab, kind of bring them over and then I'll press A to deselect everything. I'll press B for the box select, just box select those vertices and I'll press G to grab and just kind of move them up. So I can now hold down the Z button and go back into the solid view. And then what I want to do is hold down the Alt key and just select that ring of vertices right there. Now I'm going to press one on the numpad for front view and I want to extrude these down. So I'm going to press E to extrude and we are going to extrude that down. And then I can press R to rotate and G to grab. And I actually want to bring it kind of out over here. So you can see that shape is not very good. And so I want to make it more circular. So again, we're going to use that loop tools add on. So if you press N, that's going to open up the solid panel and if you click over on edit you can see here is the loop tools add-on so I'm going to click on circle and that is going to change it to a circular shape so I can now press one on the numpad for front view I can also press the n key to close the side panel and then I can scale this down with s and I can press g to grab bring that over and r to rotate just kind of rotate that over so let's press three on the numpad for side view and then I want to hold down the z button go back into wireframe and I can just kind of rotate this and make the shape. So I'll press R to rotate and G to grab and just kind of stick that right there, maybe scale it down a little bit. Now if I click with my mouse wheel, just kind of move up here and also hold down the Z button, go back into solid view. You can see that this is very stretched and then this is very close. So this face right here is pretty small, whereas this face right here is pretty big. So I just want to take these loop cuts and just kind of even them out a little bit. So I'm going to select this vertex and then double tap the G key, kind of bring that over. And then I will select this vertex, double tap the G key and bring that over. Select this one here and double tap the G key and we can kind of bring that over. And then select this one, double tap the G key and we can kind of bring that over there. And then select this one, double tap the G key and we can just kind of bring that in a little bit. And then I'm gonna hold down the shift key and I'm gonna shift select all of those vertices like that. So just those four ones. And let's press seven on the numpad for top view. And I can press G to grab and just kind of move them out a little bit just so that it's a bit more round there. And then let's press three on the numpad for front view. And I wanna select this vertex. I'll press G to grab, just kind of bring that in a little bit. Select this vertex, press G to grab and bring that in a bit. So just press control S again to save and then let's keep extruding out the leg. So again, I'm going to hold down the alt key and just select that ring of vertices. And you can see that it's actually rotating over a little bit and I don't really like that. So I want to press R to rotate and I want to rotate it on the Z axis and just kind of rotate that over and also rotate that over a little bit. Let's also press one on the numpad for front view and just kind of rotate that over a bit more flat. Now I want to make it perfectly flat. So I'm going to press S to scale. Let's scale it on the Z axis and I can type in zero and then enter. And that way it is perfectly flat. Now, before I continue extruding down the leg, you can see right here, this is a very, very big face. And so what I want to do, and so what I want to do is select this vertex and then hold down the shift key and select this vertex. And I want to double tap the G key and just kind of push that in a little bit, just kind of edge slide that in. And that way it is a bit more even, just kind of maybe bring that out a little bit as well. 
All right, that's looking pretty good. Let's go to the back here and do the same thing. So I'm gonna select this vertex, hold down the shift key, select this vertex, and I can double tap the G key and we can bring that in. We could also do the same thing up here a little bit. So I'm gonna select this vertex and shift select this vertex, and I can double tap the G key, bring that in a little bit. And then right over here, select this vertex and shift select this vertex and double tap the G key and bring that in. So now you can see that that torso is much more around. And then also right here on the back, I wanna do a similar thing that I did kind of on the front just to make it a bit more even. So right here on the back, I'm going to select this vertex and then hold down the shift key and select these other four vertices. And I can double tap the G key and just kind of edge slide those out. And also right over here, I want to select this vertex on the front, hold down the shift key and select these other vertices and I can double tap the G key and just make that a bit more even. So I can now press one on the numpad for front view. Let's press control S again to save. And then I can hold down the Z button, go back into wireframe and let go so we can go into the wireframe. Let's press A to deselect everything. And then I will press B again for the box select. And I'm just gonna drag a box around those vertices. Then I'll press G to grab. And I wanna first bring these up a little bit. And then I can press E to extrude. We're gonna extrude those down. And I'll press S to scale and we will scale those down a bit. Let's press three on the numpad for the side view and I can press G to grab, just kind of move that over. Let's press E to extrude again. And I wanna bring this one over and kind of rotate it down a little bit um, so that the knee is kind of right there and then it's kind of going in. So I actually wanna press G to grab and just kind of move this forward a little bit so that the knee is coming out a little bit and then behind the knee it's going in a little bit. So I can now press E to extrude again. Let's also press one on the numpad for the front view and I can scale this down a little bit just kind of stick it into place there on the leg. And on side view, I wanna scale this back and forth so that we have that shape of that muscle there on the leg. So I'll press S to scale, and I wanna scale this on the Y axis, just scale it up like that, and then I can kind of rotate it and move it over. Then I can press E to extrude again. We're gonna bring this way down here, and I will scale it down, scale it down even more, and rotate it so it's more flat. I'll also press one on the numpad for front view, and I need to also bring this over, just kind of line it up with the reference. Press Control S again to save, and then let's do the feet. So I'm gonna press three on the numpad for the side view. Let's press E to extrude, and we're gonna extrude that down. And then I'll press S to scale, and we're just gonna scale that up just a little. And then I'm gonna click with my mouse wheel and go to the bottom, and I'm gonna hold down the Z button, go over to solid and let go. And so I want to actually fill faces right in there. So so what I'm gonna do is select this vertex, hold down the shift key, select this vertex, and hold down the shift key, select this vertex. And then I can press F and that is going to fill a face there. Then I'm going to select this vertex and shift select this vertex. And I can now just press F and then F and then F and Blender will know to fill the faces right there. So I now want to shape this to fit the bottom of the foot. So on side view, I'm gonna press A to deselect everything and I'll press B for the box select and I'm just gonna select those two vertices and I can press G to grab, just kind of bring those down. A to deselect everything. Let's press B again for the box select. I'm just gonna select those vertices and I'll press G to grab and bring them down a little bit. All right, and then I want those to kind of be up because the foot will go up just a little. So I'm now gonna hold down the Z button, go back into solid view and then let go of the Z button. And then I'm gonna click with my middle mouse wheel and just kind of look over here on the front. So I want to make these two faces be more towards the front and then I will extrude out the foot. So I'm going to select this vertex, hold down the shift key, select this vertex, and I can press G to grab and I'm gonna bring that over a little bit and then select this vertex and shift select this vertex and I can press G again and kind of bring that over a little bit. All right, and then I also want to hold down the Alt key and then just select this ring of vertices and I'll press three on the numpad to go to the side view. I can press G to grab and I wanna bring this down on the Z axis and I wanna bring it pretty far down to about there. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is click right here to go to the face select. I wanna select this face, hold down the shift key, select this face. And I also think I will just scale these both up just a little on the x-axis. So press S to scale, X on the x-axis like that. So I wanna select this little piece right here, this face, and then hold down the shift key and select these two other faces. And then I'll press three again to go to the side view. Then I can hold down the Z button, go back into the wireframe, and I can now press E to extrude, and I want to bring this way down, and then I can press G to grab, and I wanna stick this way over here. And then I wanna scale this, so I'll press S to scale, and I wanna scale it down on the Z axis, and then just bring it down like that. All right, that's really good. Go back into the solid view, see how that's looking. So now I wanna add some loop cuts in here just to give it a little bit more detail and 
that way we can kind of change the shape of it. So I'm going to press three again to go to the side view, and then I'm going to press control R. Now I want to add two loop cuts. So I'm going to scroll my mouse wheel just once. And if you scroll your mouse wheel, now you can see that there are two loop cuts and then I'm going to left click and then right click. So it hops it back to the center. And then let me just navigate up here. So I want to just make this a bit thicker. So I'm going to press S to scale and I'm going to scale this out on the X axis just a little like that. And then I'm going to click right here in the middle one and that's going to go to the edge select and I'm going to select this edge, navigate over here, hold down the shift key and just select this edge. And then I can press S to scale and we're going to scale both of the edges out and I'll hit X and scale them on the X axis and just bring them out like that. And then I'll press three on the numpad. That's going to go to the side view, hold down the Z button and go into the wireframe. And I just want to shape this a little bit better. So I'm going to go right here to the vertex select. I'll press A to deselect everything and I'll press B for the box select. And I'm just going to box select those vertices right there. And I can press R to rotate and G to grab and just kind of move them down a little bit. All right, just like that. Now you can see right here, the ankle is supposed to get a bit thinner, but you can see it's still pretty thick right there. So what I'm gonna do is press Control R to add a loop cut, click, and then we're gonna drag down to about there where the ankle is the smallest, and then click to place that. And then I can press S to scale, and we're gonna scale that down, and G to grab, and I'm gonna move that over. All right, just like that. So if I press one on the numpad for front view, you can see how that's looking. Maybe scale that up a little bit on the X axis like that. All right, now if you look on the top of the feet, I want to scale the feet out a little bit and kind of change the shape of them from the top. So I'm going to press seven on the numpad and that's going to take me to top view. And then I'm going to hold down the Z button, go into wireframe, let go. So let's now press B for the box select. I'm just gonna box select the feet and I'll press G to grab, just kind of bring those out. A to deselect everything. I'll press B for the box select. I don't want to box select the side of the feet and I can press R to rotate and G to grab and just kind of stick that over. So now those feet have a bit better of a shape. They're kind of coming forward more on the front. And I might also just shift select those vertices and press G to grab and bring them up on the Y axis. All right, I can tab back into object mode. Let's see how that is looking. So that's pretty cool. So we still need to do the arms and then it is very blocky, but we will be adding a subdivision surface modifier to smooth out the character and then we will also shade the character smooth so you won't see all that blocky stuff. All right, so let's tap back into edit mode and I'm going to press one on the numpad and that's gonna take us to the front view. So I'm just gonna zoom in here and we are going to be modeling the arm. So I'm gonna hold down the Z button, go over to wireframe and then let go. And then I'm just gonna make sure everything is deselected by pressing A and then I'm gonna press B for the box select and I'm just gonna box select that loop of vertices. I'm gonna press G to grab and then I'll scale it down a little bit more. And then I'm going to press E to extrude and I want to extrude this up and I'm also gonna scale it up a little bit right here. And we're gonna give just a little variation in the shape there to make it look like the muscles on the arm. So it'll be a little bit bigger right here and then where the joint is, it'll just be a little bit smaller. So I can press E to extrude again, bring that over and then I can scale that down, scale that down a little bit and just kind of move it into place. Let's also press seven on the numpad to go to top view just to make sure that I was looking fine. I'll press one again for front view so I can press E to extrude and I want to scale this up a little bit and I'm going to scale it just a little bit bigger. I know that is kind of going away from the reference image, but when we add the subdivision surface modifier, it will smooth it out a little bit and round it out a bit more. Um, and once we add the subsurf, we can go back here and change anything if we need to. So I'm going to press E to extrude again and this time we're going to bring this way over and then I can scale this down and kind of just put it at like the starting of the wrist kind of about there. All right, and we'll scale that down. Now, if I press seven on the numpad for top view, you can see that I've scaled it way down, but I actually don't want to scale it too far down back and forth. So on top view, I'll press S to scale and I'll scale it on the Y axis and I'll bring that back a little bit. All right, so that's good. So I want to now extrude this out and then extrude it out again. And we're going to have a little spot here that we can then extrude out the thumb. So I'll press E to extrude again. Let's extrude that out and just kind of bring it here to the starting of the thumb and I'll scale it down a little bit and I can also press seven on the numpad for top view and let's scale this whole thing out a little bit on the x-axis just scale that out a little bit and kind of stick it over there and then I'll also press a to deselect everything and I'll press B for the box select just drag a box around that and then I'll bring it more into the center something like that okay a to deselect everything I'll press B for the box select again just box select those vertices I want to bring them back a little bit and scale them down a little bit and then I can press E to extrude 
E to extrude, we're just going to extrude that out. And then I can scale it on the Y axis. And we're just going to scale that up a little bit. And then I can press one on the number pad. And that's going to take me to front view. I just need to navigate back up here. So go to front view by pressing one on the numpad. And I just want to bring this over. So basically right here, that is where the thumb is going to come out. And then I can press E to extrude. We're going to extrude this up to kind of where the palm is. And then just kind of scale it down on the Z axis. And then this is going to be the fingers. So let me press seven on the numpad. I can kind of bring that over into the center there. I'll press one again on the numpad for front view. And then I can press E to extrude. And we're going to extrude that down. Just kind of rotate it and scale it. And we'll scale that down a little bit. Let's press seven again for the top view. And I can scale that. So press S to scale on the Y axis. And we're just going to scale that down like that. All right. So now what I want to do is I just want to select this vertex right here. I can press one again to go to the front view. And I can press G to grab and just kind of bring that over. So that's just kind of popping out. So if you pull down the Z button, go back to solid view, you can see the very front there of those fingers are just popping out a little bit. And it'll just kind of round that out. All right, tab back into object mode. Let's see how this look is looking. So you can press control S again to save. That is looking pretty cool. So now I just need to make the thumb and then we will smooth it out with the subdivision surface. So I can press seven on the numpad and that'll take me to the top view. I'm just gonna zoom in here and then I'll tab into edit mode. And then actually I wanna kind of navigate down here and I actually want to go to the face select. So click right here to go to the face select and I want to select this face and then hold down the shift key and select this face. I'll press seven for top view and then I can press E to extrude and then R to rotate. Now before I rotate it all the way over, I do want to make it more flat. So I'm going to press S to scale. Let's scale this on the Y axis and I can type in zero and then enter just to scale it flat. All right. And we can also scale it down a little bit. Then I can press R to rotate and G to grab and just kind of scale that down and move it over. And then I can press E to extrude, R to rotate and G to grab. And we can kind of scale that and just kind of stick it right there where the thumb is. All right, let's press one on the numpad to go to front view. You can see the thumb goes down a little bit. So I'll just bring that down, kind of rotate that down as well. And then I need to just select this loop of vertices and bring it down as well. So you can just click right here on the vertex select. I'm gonna hold down the alt key and just select this loop of vertices and I'll press G to grab and just kind of bring that down there. All right, that is pretty good. Although right in here, you can see that's a little bit weird. So I'm just gonna press G to grab, just kind of bring that out. Um, so it's a bit more round. All right, that is pretty good. Let's tab back into object mode and see how that's looking. And that's really good. So I'll press control S again to save. And we can now add the subdivision surface modifier to smooth it all out. So with the object selected, you can go to the modifier properties and I'm gonna click on add modifier and I'm gonna add the subdivision surface. And then right here on the viewport and render, I want these to be both set to two and that way it'll be nice and smooth. And then what you can do is you can use the object context menu to shade that smooth. Now I use the right click select. So I hit the W key for the object context menu, but you can just right click and then click on shade smooth with the object context menu. You can also click on object and go right down here and click on shade smooth. All right, there we go. That's really cool. Now there are just a few little things that we could change um, just to, to make the shape look a bit better. So I'm going to tap back into edit mode and there's a few things you could do. I'm going to hold down the alt key and just select this ring of faces. And I'm just going to scale that up a little bit just to give a little bit more of that shape with the different muscles on the arm. I'm going to hold down the alt key and select that loop of vertices and I'm going to scale that up as well just a little. All right that's pretty good. And then also if you want to make the shoulders look a bit better make the shoulders look a bit more defined you could select that vertex and press G to grab and bring it up on the Z axis. You could also hold down the shift key and just shift and select those pieces and then press G and Z and bring that up a little bit. And now you can see that, that shoulder is a bit more defined. Now I also want to make the chest a bit more defined as well. So what I'm going to do is just select this vertex right here. I can press G to grab and just kind of bring that out a little bit. And you can see it's just going to pop the, the chest out and kind of give it that shape a little bit better. You could also just select this vertex and let me press three to go to the side view. And you can see that that's kind of rounding over. So if I press G to grab, I can just bring that chest out. That's looking a bit nicer. And then if I go back to front view, if I just use the box select by pressing B and just clicking and dragging and selecting those vertices, I can press G to grab and just kind of bring them back a little bit just to make that shape a little bit better. That's looking pretty good. And then if you wanna keep on doing that for a few different things, like if I go into edit mode, I can press one on the numpad, actually three on the numpad to go to side view. I can press Z Z, move my mouse over to wireframe and let go and then just press a to make sure everything is deselected so like this muscle here on the back of the leg I could press B for the box select 
just box select those vertices and press G to grab and just kind of bring them up a little bit so it's a bit more defined. I'll press A to deselect that. I could also press B for the box select and just box select the knee and press G to grab and just pop out the knee a little bit and then also press B for the box select just box select those and just kind of bring out the bottom just a little, just kind of defining those shapes a little bit better. Um, so you could continue to do that if you want to just kind of change the shapes just a little. All right, and then there is one more thing that I want to do. I want to sharpen up the bottom of the feet here because you can see they're very round and I just want to sharpen that up a little bit. So I'm going to press tab to go into edit mode and then I want to add a loop cut here to sharpen that up. So I'm going to press control R, control R will add a loop cut and then I can click once and then that'll go to the edge slide and I can just bring that down and click again to place that just about there. All right, and that is it. So just press Control S again to save your project. And that is it for the tutorial. That is basic character modeling in Blender. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and I hope you found it helpful. And if you'd like to learn how to rig this character, I also will be releasing a tutorial on how to rig this character. So when that's released, I'll have the links in the video description, and I will also put that rigging tutorial right up there on the end screen. And if you'd like to help support me and my YouTube YouTube channel, then you can check out my Gumroad store and my Patreon page. Those are two great ways to help support the channel. So I hope this was helpful and thank you for watching.